Okay, so let's look at this here. Here is our resistor, our carbon resistor. And this is hooked up to the Agilent 34405A, your new friend. Okay, so let's measure this resistance at room temperature. Turn it on. And to measure resistance, you push the omega. Now, every time you use this device in this course, always change the range to get the most number of significant data. In other words, let's look at this. We have some leading zeros here, and only two significant numbers. We can do better than that. So we change the range. Here we have three significant numbers. Here we have four significant numbers. Can we do better? Yes, here we have five significant numbers. Can we do better? No, we can't do better. That's as best as we can do. So it's around, you know, 21, 22 ohms. Write down all your numbers every time. The last number is a little jumpy. Just try to guess it. Okay, great. Now, let's get ourselves a throbbing mug of liquid nitrogen. So you go to your TA, your rubber ball. Okay, so I'm about to put this resistor in a pool of liquid nitrogen, drastically decreasing the temperature of the carbon resistor. So why don't you take a guess at what happens, but also watch, watch the, watch the voltmeter as it's measuring the resistance. Interesting. Interesting. So that's so now measure the resistance at liquid nitrogen temperature. Okay. While I'm here, I want to point out that whenever this resistor is in this cup, make sure it's never touching the sides of the cup. Okay. So now let's set the current. To do that, we need to turn on the current meter. Okay. To turn this on, we turn this knob clockwise until we can't turn it anymore. That's always the correct setting for us. It will be with, next to the A with a solid line with a dashed line underneath. That's direct current ampage. And now we want to measure direct current voltage with this by pushing DCV. Okay, so let's get our first, our first current of 0.7 amps. Now, I just want to remind you, never turn on this power supply with the resistor not being submerged in liquid nitrogen because the resistance is so small, you could fry it. You can kill it. Also, never turn on and touch the power supply with two hands. Always have one hand behind your back or in your pocket. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on and then turn this up till I get around 0.7 amps to set up my first run. Okay. Okay, that's good enough. And while this is on, I just want to remind you about the scale here. When you measure on this Agilent 34405A, remember, always try to get the most amount of significant data. In this case, we've got five significant numbers here. Ah, and now we see the other way. We know we've gone too far. We'll see the OL overload. So I've got to go back one. That's as best we can do the five numbers there. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this off because when I turn it on again, it's at the 0.7 amps. I know I'm good for my first run. So now we have our two cups here. I'm going to top this off until it's near the top, about a centimeter from the top. And then I'll do the same in the other cup here. Okay. And now I do that balancing act. Oh, well, what do you know? Just move just a tiny bit from here. Okay, great. Now, I take, I move this to one gram, one gram. And now I'm ready to start the timer. Make sure I reset this, good. 
Now, one hand behind my back. I turn on the power supply. Now the point seven amps is going in through that cup right there. And you can even take a look. Well, hang on. Hang on. Okay, so once it crosses the center, I'm going to start it. Bam! Okay, I started the stopwatch. And you can see, ah, uh, you can see that, boy, it is. You can see that ohmic heat happening. All right, so now I'm going to move this to five grams. And I'm going to stop the stopwatch as soon as the needle crosses the center again because that means I've evaporated four grams. So I'm going to watch this. So as I'm waiting for this to happen, I just want to... I just want to make sure that you remind yourself why did we need two cups here? And why did we need this dummy resistor here that's not connected up to anything? Hmm, think on that while we wait. Okay. As soon as that needle crosses, I'm going to stop the stopwatch. Okay, excellent. Okay, so now I have my three pieces of data. I have my delta T here. I have my current in amps here. And I have my volts, my voltages here. Okay, so before I turn this off, let's now set up for the next run and change this to 0.65. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. And then I top everything off and do the rebound. Oh, set this back. Put that back to zero. I top this off and then set it back to the balancing point. Maybe move a little bit here. Okay. Okay. So as soon as it's balanced. I move this to one gram again. It's the exact same thing one more time. Okay. I turn it on, and then I start the stopwatch as soon as the needle crosses the center. And then as soon as I start it, and as soon as it crosses the center, I switch this to five grams. And then I stop it when the needle crosses the center again because I've evaporated four grams. Then I take my three numbers, set this then to the next point, point six, and you're done. You just do that five times, plot your line, there you go. Excuse me, this gives me an idea. I have to role play one more time. Because what if we took a series of resistors and we put them in your oceans? I could evaporate your water supplies and then gather all that vapor in my army of airships. I could hold your planet ransom. Will you meet my demands? <laughs>